Hey, what's going on? This is Jerry Feta, CEO and founder of Wealth Dynamics. I've got a great video for you today. It's going to be a comparison of a life insurance policy someone else designed, not in my company, not in my world or agency at all, as a sacred account compared to an actual sacred account. They're different companies. I work with both of them. We design sacred accounts with both of them. And I want to share with you the differences of those designs. Now, as you watch this video, I want you to know this is going to be a lot of numbers. Right. So I want you to hang tight. I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to make it as easy to understand as I possibly can. But I want you to pause the video if you need. If you have questions during the video, ask those in the comments. Right. And stick with it. You're not going to see a lot of my face. It's going to be a lot of the actual illustrations and the numbers. And this was something I did for a client. So this is a behind the scenes look I'm sharing with you. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, here we go. So um, the first thing is when you're buying life insurance, you want to keep in mind with with full life insurance and the sacred account concept, you actually want um, the base full life insurance more so than term insurance, right? The base full life insurance, that's what produces dividends. That's what gives you growth in the long range. Okay. Term insurance is just a cost and it doesn't give you any growth. So it actually creates drag on the performance of the policy. So we want to minimize the amount of term insurance uh, we do want to have, you know, the optimal amount of full life insurance where we're creating a good amount of upfront liquidity, right? So on yours, you can see you've not actually purchased that much full life insurance. You've got about 59000 in whole life, okay? You have your dividends going into paid up additions, which is good, but you also have a level term rider for 20 years at 325000 right? So Typically, when a term rider is used, it's because you're dumping in uh, a sum of money and you're not following it up with a big enough uh, ongoing contribution. And so you need to add the term insurance so that the policy doesn't show that it's a mech status with the IRS and become taxable. Okay, so that can work. I used to design my policies that way. The problem is your growth in the long range on an annual basis is not going to yield quite as high and you will have this cost for the next 20 years on the term insurance. Okay. Now, let's scroll down and take a look at the illustration here. Now, Lafayette's a great company. That's actually why I'm in the Bahamas. Um, you know, we did a, a trip here with Lafayette Life uh, because we do we do so much production with them. We're on their leadership council. And so they have all their top leaders in the Bahamas right now. So we're very familiar with Lafayette Life. We do a lot of business with them. Okay, good. So let's talk about the illustration here. Next, I don't want to interrupt you too long. I just want to give you a free offer for my book, The Blueprint to Financial Freedom. If you go to jerryfeta.com forward slash B2F promo, you can get the book now. I'm going to let you get back to the video. Great. So we have a couple of things to look at. The first thing I want to look at is I want to look at your, your dump-ins, how much you're putting in, what your contributions and such are. Okay. So we're doing a total lump sum dump-in of 20000 which is a good chunk. Um, in my opinion, I would have actually gone higher with the ongoing contributions and lower with the uh, term insurance, right? And that's going to give you less drag on the policy, lower the overall cost, and that way you have higher growth over the long term. Okay, you can still achieve a dump in. You can still, um, you know, put in twenty thousand. It just is you're putting in more than four fifty a month. Uh, you're able to actually achieve a better overall benefit as far as growth is concerned. Okay. So we put in uh, 25,400, we've got 20,604. First thing I want to look at is I want to look at the net cash value column. And uh, I want to see, okay, what's my liquidity, right? What's my liquidity versus my contribution? Okay, so if we take the 20,604, we divide that by the 25,400, your liquidity is 81.12% basically. Uh, which is good. It's right in that 70 to 90% category. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm looking at is what I call the magic ATM machine. Okay. The magic ATM machine is in what year does the increase in your net cash value exceed the premium outlay for the year? Right. So, yours here, if we go down, we can see that you're putting in 5,400 per year. Uh, if we go down your, I call this the magic ATM machine because in year, uh, in year eight, you're putting in 5,400, but you've got 5,458 appearing in your cash value, right? So it's kind of like if you were to put a dollar in an ATM machine, and then that same year, you know, instantaneously, boom, more money appeared than what you put in. Okay. So we go 5,458 divided by 5,400. 
we can see that for every dollar you're putting in in that year, you're getting a dollar and one cent uh, in that same year, right? And that continues to climb. Now, that's a, that's a key thing I look at because I'm not looking at this as an investment. I'm looking at it as a banking business. And in any business, I'm looking at at what point does my profit exceed what I've got to contribute to the business to get it growing and get it profitable, right? So you've got to basically do capital contributions the first seven or eight years of your policy before it gets to the point of, okay, the income of the policy is now higher than what I've put in, okay? Now, the next thing I'm looking at is what's called the break-even point. Okay, the break-even point is what year is your net cash value higher than what you've got in there total, right? Your contributions and everything. So let's just take a look at that. We've got 25,400, of course, in the first year. Um, and if we look at break-evens often will happen around year years five through 10. I just want to look at year six and see what we've got there. So we've got 5,400 going in. In year six, we've got net cash value of 41,135. So if we count this out, we've got one, two, three, four, five years of contributions, right? So 5,400 times five. Uh, so we've put in 52,400. We've got 41,135. So the break even hasn't happened yet, okay? Um, I'm gonna go down to year 10 and see if it happens by year 10 on this policy. So again, 25,400 has gone in in year one, and then we've basically got nine more years of 5,400 going in. So we've put in 74,000. Um, we've still not broken even yet at year 10. Okay, so let's take a look at year 15. So again, we put in 25,400, and then we've got uh, essentially 14 years of 5,400 going in. Okay, so year 15, we've contributed 101,000. The net cash value is 97. So the break even still has not occurred. I am going to guess that it's going to happen in year 17 or year 18. So let's check out year 17 or 18. Let's take 18 just to be on the safe side. We've got 121,851 in that column on the net cash value that year. We've got 254. And then we have. 17 years of contributing $5,400 a year. Okay, good. So we've got 117 we've contributed and your net cash value is 121,851. So um, in all honesty, I don't like this design. You guys don't break even until year 17 or 18, right? Ideally, I want to see the break even has happened in the first 10 years of the policy. Right. So when you guys have the magic ATM machine happen, that would be the year I'd want to see the total net cash value breaking. I would want to see the magic ATM happening in the first three to five years generally. Okay. So I don't love the policy design on the Lafayette. We definitely would have designed this one quite differently. Now, this is with One America. Um, and I'll just show you guys the differences here. All right. So we've got the illustration. I want to just find on the One America illustration where it shows. The breakdown on on the type of insurance because there probably was very little term insurance on this one if any at all and i really i don't know that there is because the death benefit continues to climb so we might have gotten away with not putting any term on this um here we go okay base whole life insurance policy 23,999 PUAs. Yep. So there's no term insurance on this. So there's no drag, right? There's no drag. The cost is very low, which means your performance is going to be optimal, right? All right. So let's take a look at the numbers here. This one is a little bit different illustration than Lafayette. Um, so the main things we want to focus on here is total net cash value at the end of the year and the total annual outlay, right? Um, so that's the main things I'm looking at as far as design is concerned on this one. We'll have to do the math manually because there is not a column for uh, the annual increase on this particular illustration. So let's just look at, again, first things first here, which is what is the year one liquidity? Okay, so we can see we're putting in uh, 59999 and 99 cents. Year in cash value is 3516. So we'll take 3516. We're going to divide that by 5999.99. Okay, liquidity is 58.60%. Now, not the highest. It's not in 70 to 90. It's a little bit lower. However, because this is a smaller amount, um, 
the lump sum isn't going into it. And so it's more like we want to get the the long-term growth of this, let's just call it 6,000. We want to get the long-term growth of this 6,000 fully optimized because we're not starting with a huge chunk of cash, right? So if we were starting with a big lump sum, the numbers would look different on the liquidity. Since we're not, we're saying, okay, how do we take this 6,000 a year deposit and get the most out of it over the life of the policy, okay? So that's our year one cash value. Now we're putting in, um, fifty nine nine ninety nine. Right, so we've got thirty five sixteen. We've got seventy two ninety eight. I want to find out when the magic ATM machine happens. Right, so I think it's going to happen on yours in year three or four. Let's just find out. So we're going to take a look at year three. The cash value here is twelve nine ninety three, and we're going to go ahead and subtract that from the prior year of seventy two ninety eight. Okay, so almost that year, it's 5695. It's probably happening again then in year four, right? So year four cash value is gonna be 18913. Uh we're gonna take out the prior year of 12, 993. Not quite. Okay, so it's 5920. Okay, let's take a look at year five. We have 25064. Minus 18,913. Boom. Okay, so year five, the magic ATM machine happens. Your cash value increases by uh, $6,151, and you're only putting in 6000 right? So if we take this and we divide the increase by the contribution of 5999.99, okay? In year five, for every dollar you're putting in, you're getting a dollar and two and a half cents out okay now keep in mind on the lafayette illustration you didn't have this happening until year eight and in year eight it was only a dollar and one cent right so you're having the magic atm happen three years sooner and you're getting double the the increase that year now so that's that's basically from a business standpoint right my my contributions as the owner of this banking business are now being exceeded by annual profit so for every dollar I put in, I'm going to get more money in than I take out. Okay. Now, the other thing to look at here is now going to be when do we break even? Okay. So this one, we've got several years worth of, of 5999.99 going in. So let's just do the math on this and find out when do we break even, right? So let's take a, a look at year seven. So year seven, we've put in a total of 41.999. We're at 38,095 in cash values. It's not in year seven. Let's take a look at year eight. Okay, it's not in year eight. Let's just skip to year. Um, actually, we can see it doesn't happen in year 10. We put in $59,999. We've got $59,640. It's very close by year 10. Okay, uh, let's take a look then at year 11. Hey, you want to see a magic trick? Get a copy of my book, Blueprint to Financial Freedom. I know it's in front of my chest and my face because I want you focusing on the book and not me for a moment before you go back to focusing on me and the content. So we've got 5999.99 times 10 years going in plus in year 11, the contribution drops to 2519. So we've put in, in year 11, we've put in a total of 62,519 and 89 cents. We have 64,000. $5. So break even happens between year 10 and 11 on this policy. That's eight years sooner than the Lafayette policy, right? So that just goes to show you the, the key with proper design. Our, our partners at, at the Money Multiplier, they've done 13,000 policies um, total between all of our teams and everyone in the group. They're very good at what they do. They're, we're the number one IBC sacred account uh, practitioner in the nation, right? So the policy design comes down to who you're working with the knowledge that they have, and, and we just simply have the best people. Um, so here's how I want to have you guys viewing this. You have a business where after four or five years, you will make more money than you put in every single year for the rest of your life. After 10 years, you've recuperated all of everything you've put into the business through profits, and everything beyond that is pure profit. You don't have any more of what the IRS would call basis in that business. You've already taken everything out that you put in plus the gains, okay? Now, here's the other part of this. 
because the policy has been capitalized for these first 10 years, meaning we front loaded, we did the hard work first to build up the policy, you'll see we dropped the contribution down because it's super efficient now. And this is where you're opening more sacred accounts in the future because you have less income going in. You don't need to have that much going in. And I want to show you guys what happens here. Okay. So he, here we have, this is back to the magic ATM concept. We have 68,547 in cash value. The prior year we had 64,005 in cash value. Okay. So that is an increase of $4,542, right? $4,542. Now you only contributed $2,519.99. So we divide the 42 by the 2519. This will show you for every dollar you put in, you're going to pull out, be able to pull out $1.80 that year. That's why this is called the magic ATM. I want you to imagine going to an ATM machine, putting a dollar in, and then being able to take out a dollar and 80 cents because the, that one dollar went in. Right, that would be pretty incredible. How many dollars would you want to put in that ATM machine, right? Um, now, this continues to get better and better, right? So we've got uh, here, let's go down to year 20. Year 21, actually. Year 21 to year 20. So the cash value is 117, 658. Prior year is 111, 427. So that's an increase of 6231. Again, you're only putting in even less now, 23 99.99. So your increase is 6231 if we divide that by the 2399 and 99 cents. For every for every dollar you're putting in, you're getting $2.59 out. Okay, so again, think of an ATM machine where you stick a dollar in and then you pull out $2.59. Okay, that's pretty incredible. So that's how a policy should look. Again, yours broke even on Lafayette in year 18. On, on One America, the break-even happens between years 10 and 11. On the Lafayette policy, the magic ATM concept really happened in year eight. On ours with One America, it happened in year five. Okay, so that's really what I want to go over with you guys on this. The key here is making sure the design is correct. And this is also, too, like the banking quadrant. I want you guys to keep that in mind. When you're putting money into a policy, you're simply being the depositor. Not any different than the bank you go to before you had your own banking system, okay? The steps that are different is instead of the banker borrowing against your deposit, now you are the banker borrowing against your own deposit. So that's the other part is how quickly can we borrow against these deposits to pay off debt or self-finance large purchases or invest, right? Now, as the borrower, you would then repay your loans with interest. That's the third part of the quadrant. The fourth part being you're also the shareholder. So the shareholder's job is to design an optimal banking business and expand it once it's profitable. Profitable means the loans. When you take a loan, you're earning more than the cost to borrow, right? And so when you have that happening and you're scalable and profitable, then it's like, good, it's time to open up the next location because we have the income and the savings to do so, okay? So I hope that that helps and gives you some, some insight on the design. Uh, there is more to it than just what's the year one liquidity and how quickly does it break even. Uh, the magic ATM concept, the banking quadrant, these really do apply. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hey, this is Jerry Fetty here. I want to thank you for watching my video, watching my content. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to learn more about the blueprint to financial freedom and how you can achieve passive income that exceeds your savings, your expenses, your taxes, your generosity, and build wealth like the top 1%, I want to encourage you, grab a copy of my book, the Blueprint to Financial Freedom. You can go to jerryfeta.com forward slash B2F promo, or you can click the link in the description of the video here. The copy is free. You cover your shipping. We'll send the book out to you. And we'll send you an email with a bunch of great bonus material also for free. Get the book, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on my next content.